and this is what I replace on my CD4E's of course the LS kit now this one's going to need uh, direct steels and pressure plate I've gotten to where I just put the uh, entire bushing kit in these I used to replace these four uh, this is the sun shell these two go to the reverse drum this one goes to the forward direct drum I found that most of these bushings are pretty pretty worn out and they should be replaced um, there's a bushing that goes on the uh, let's see I think I got it out here this bearing here likes to blow up but there's a bushing that goes in in here where this rides <clears throat> and I think it creates enough torque on this that it causes this bearing to blow up I think that's what's causing that bearing to blow up of course the filter I put a Sonex 2.4 accumulator kit in it a superior valve body kit and the band the band's not broken <clears throat> the band will be broken so change it I also put a uh, no groove servo in these they usually come with a with a one groove you put a zero groove it extends it out takes up the slack in that band the, if you put a uh, younger kit in it to give you a washer to push that band up even further but uh, I don't put the younger kit in them anymore. I had too many problems with them. So I put this kit in and I put the no groove and the 2.4 accumulator. It seems to take care of all my flurry issues and, and all that kind of stuff. And one thing I forgot was this uh, forward direct drum. These are almost always bad too. There's two different ones. There's a three clutch and a four clutch. It has to do with the snap ring groove here. Also, it has to do with the way the return spring is put on back here. These drums like to split a crack where it's welded together right here. And depending on where the crack is, how it's cracked, is which set of clutches is going to just smoke. And in this case, it was the drags. A lot of times, it's the forwards or the coast clutches in here. But uh, there's two different style drums. There's a good one and there's a crappy one. Do yourself a favor and buy the, spend a few extra bucks and buy the, the good one. It doesn't go bad near as often as that crappy one. You get that one from China and it ain't going to last but maybe a week or so. And you're going to be right back doing it again. things on the CD4E here. I guess we'll start with the valve body so I can get it out of the way. On this uh, valve here that they have, this Sonex, I mean the Superior kit has it replaced. This little o-ring goes in the tip here and it seems to be a little, a little small so I just give a few little tugs there to open it up, put a little grease on the tip of it, put it on there, yeah. put a little grease on the tip of the spring here, put your spring seat on, grab your little clip that you're going to put in. get it all ready so you don't want this to come back out once you push it in. Push it in straight. You don't want that little o-ring to fold over. If you cut it, I haven't found anything that fits in there properly. I don't know what you would replace it with, but I'm sure you can find something. 
I found on this valve. Get your screwdriver. There's a little sleeve in there. You push that forward. It pushes this out just enough. So you can get a pair of pliers on there. And if you're careful. Come right out. Put that black spring in they want you to put in. Make sure that sleeve goes back. I use uh, about the lineup push pins for the valve body. They really come in handy. Put these uh, three bolts in. They're shorter ones. Put those in, tighten them down, make sure these pins move that easy. Then put the other section on, tighten it down make sure they still move good. On your um, solenoid assembly, there's a little area right here. That part of the gasket goes there. You want to flip that over. Uh, your intermediate sprag turns that way, locks that way when it's in the case. Forward sprag, Turns that way and locks that way. Put you a no groove. The groove will be down here in the tip. Like that right there. Put you a no groove in there. The uh, kit has you. Put uh, the fishing is tight. All right, there we go. As you drill two 62 thousandths holes right here, there's a little notch on here, and I just uh, I drill my holes where that notch is, and I drill it from this side. And I found that you break fewer drill bits if you drill from this side. And then once that's all drilled. I go over to the grinder and grind that down, make this notch bigger than what it was. Make sure you sand out here, otherwise it'll rip that bushing down to pieces. And then when you put this on here, by the way, this is a four tab washer that goes down in here. If it wasn't broke when you took the unit apart, replace it anyway, it's gonna break. If you look right here, and there's a feed hole, lube hole, and I take and I find the best area on here. I want at least one of these holes to line up with that so it gets a lot of lube down in there. These bushings are really bad about wearing out, especially these and this one, and uh, this one right here. Those are the bare minimum you need to replace, but like I say, I, I replace them all. So make sure it's all lined up. Another thing that you want to do is uh, make sure your battery connections are super great on these vehicles, and you're also going to want to run a extra ground strap from the battery down to the tranny. On your pumps, these are E4OD valve body pins. I take them out of a bad case and I use that to line my pumps up. Just screw it in here and 
line up to line up the pump with, with them and then tighten the bolts down. Uh, the early pumps, the plate here, had an extra hole. You know, memory serves me, it was shaped like that. I believe it was in this this spot right here. It's either in this spot or this spot. You come across a plate that's got an extra hole, doesn't look like this one. This is a late plate. You want to throw that plate away and put one of these plates on there. Um, might be it. We'll come back. These lip seals right here. Easy to cut when you're putting them in. So save your old ones until you get it down in there. You may be putting your old ones back in there. And uh, the best tool I've found for doing those besides having the, the installers for them is that little lip wizard that they put in some of these rebuild kits. This little thing right here. This is my normal lip seal tool. It's just a uh, snap-on drawer lock tool. That's what I normally use but on these I use this. On your pump rings, see how they're you got the bevel there to it. It goes like that. Don't put it like that. Put it like that. It's gonna lock up and uh, fit a little large. So just give it a little twist. Now he'll help keep them in there. You can also put some grease on them if you want to. This bushing here, when you put it in, go out to your driver's side axle and make sure it fits in nice and easy. You don't want to get the unit totally installed in the car and then find out this bushing is too tight. Um, oh, on the back of this drum here. I don't have the resizer for this ceiling ring that goes here so I always put a hose clamp on it. And right before I'm ready to set the uh, sprag assembly because it seals right inside here and this makes it a lot easier. Right before I get ready to drop this in there I, I take that's when I take that off. This area right in here likes to oxidize really bad so get you a piece of emery cloth and Buff that down before you put it in the washer. Makes your pumps go in a lot easier. And three and four clutch on your intermediates. Some have two cushion plates, some have one. Most of the ones I see are like this. This opening in the steels goes right here. Different tooth counts on your sprockets, different widths, different widths of chains, different lengths of chains. 
colored link that goes up. Chains are pretty bad about stretching on these. Sometimes it'd be a little tricky getting it back in there with new bushings. Tighten that chain up quite a bit from what it was. Seal installers make these a lot easier to put in. And there's something on these, these seals that I've been getting. They look like this. Let's just show you what happens. This little dust cap right here is going to come right off now. I've been having to glue these in there so that they stay in there. But uh, front seals, I put a little 3M around the around the seal. back and glue that in. I want to this last thing I want to show you here, I think. Put my bands in. My bands. I'll put my servos in. on there. Give them a little love cap to get them started. And got a four inch C clamp. Put this in right there. right on the edge of that and just as you tighten it down tap the other end of your cap in Jackass now. Usually I don't push it out like that. But well, since we're on camera, we gotta make it look bad. so you can take it out. This is another thing you gotta make sure is 
damn sure it's all the way in. It loves to pop out. This is the only other thing to show how the linkage goes. Come back when I got the valve body all ready to go in. Need one of the long bolts, one of the regular bolts. Long bolt up here, very top bolt. Very bottom bolt. Your wiring harness is free. Once these two bolts are lined up, all the rest of them are lined up. Don't forget to make about making that. I'm sure that's in the right spot. your manual valve goes all the way and we're good to go. I also forgot some of the early ones used to have a vent right over the solenoid assembly there. And they were bad about blowing the fluid out the vent. So if you got one that's an earlier model and it's blowing fluid out you're supposed to relocate the vent and you just move it away from the solenoid assembly. And uh, put you a new hose on it. You do it however you want to. It ain't that big of a deal. You just need to get it off of the solenoid assembly because it would squirt oil right out the vent. <laughs> 